everyone, and welcome back to the Multiple Careers podcast. This is episode number six, and in today's episode, I will talk about why you shouldn't stay with the same company for too long. But before we start, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone joining me here, listening in, or watching this on uh, my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really, really excited to have you here, and I hope that going forward on this podcast, I will be able to provide you with useful and valuable information on how you can build the best possible career for yourself, how you can have a fulfilling and meaningful career instead of just existing and just doing what everyone else does. If you're listening to this podcast episode right now, chances are that you're in this kind of a situation. You've been working for one and the same company for quite a while, and it doesn't really matter how long exactly it could be 20 years on the extreme it could be 10 years it could be eight years five years or even just two years the point is that you've arrived at a point you've arrived at a phase where you're now asking yourself have i overstayed am i staying at this company too long is it time to perhaps look outward look what else is out there what other opportunities exist out there instead of just staying here but on the other hand while you have this drive or urge to um, try your luck outside try and explore something else at the same time you are also feeling or starting to feel very comfortable at your organization. It might simply be that you love where your desk is located. You've already arranged it in a perfect way. You are already so used to the processes going on in the organization, to the way meetings are held. And you might even love your boss and your colleagues and you feel that you're having such a good time. But yet you're asking yourself, is it actually a good idea to continue, stay on here, or should I look out for other kinds of opportunities? And that is exactly what I want to talk about today. So today in this podcast episode, I want to share with you three reasons why it might not be a good idea to stay in the same company for too long. And then I want to also try and answer the question of how long is too long because that might exactly be your question today you might be asking yourself okay if i shouldn't stay at this one and the same company for too long then how long should i stay what is the ideal duration should it be two years or five years or maybe eight years that i should stay in one organization is there like any norm that, that I should follow. And I will also give you some statistics on that. And lastly, I will also share with you two exceptions, two cases in which it does make sense to perhaps just stay a few years longer in that same organization. So let's just go straight into it and start with the three reasons. So what are the three reasons why you should not stay at the same company, work in the same role, especially for too long? So number one has to do with your compensation, which is slow earning growth. If you stay at the same company, same organization for too long, chances are that your income will increase very slowly and only marginally. And there are two reasons to this. The first reason is that most companies have a rather rigid compensation structure. And the larger the company gets, uh, the more rigid it will become because the larger the company is, the more uh, policies they have, the more rules and regulations, the bigger the HR department is, the more layers of management are involved in, um, in determining uh, who gets paid what and so on. So this whole thing gets very rigid and it makes them not able to flexibly adapt to what employees actually demand from them and they're just not that flexible to adjust to whatever is the current market rate. And th this is one example. Many large companies have a structure, what is called um, the band structure for compensation. So depending on which band you are in, let's say that you are in a band that I will just call band six. Let's say band six is the band uh, where managers are in. And as long as you are in that band, in that band, 
your compensation, your income, your, your overall package will be capped at a certain number. So as long as you, you are in that band, your income can never go beyond that cap. In order to exceed the income that you're making right now, you would need to move into a higher band, and that would mean that you would need a promotion. So no matter how well you do your work, it doesn't matter because as long as you're in that band, you will not be able to earn more. So that is just one example of how compensation structures can get pretty rigid. Another example is that the the percentage by which your income can increase might be capped. So it might not be an absolute number, but there might be a policy, for example, where every half year your salary cannot increase more than 5% or not more than 10% and so on. So it's different from company to company. It's not fixed. That's something that you need to know, especially when you're just starting out with your first job. Go and talk to your HR or your manager and find out what are actually the limitations to income to income increase in in your company or in your department so that you are perfectly clear um, of how far you can go when it comes to income okay the second reason is more psychological so this is what I mean when you're in a company for too long there is a tendency i would say for the company to take you for granted and that might sound something um, rather it, it might sound rather mean but it's it's just a fact it's just a reality and how things are so from my experience and based on what i saw happening to other people this is what i could observe in terms of the psychological effect so this is what usually happens to highly performing individuals in companies Usually highly performing individuals, they're very driven, very dedicated, and managers or management assigns them additional tasks and additional projects. And usually these employees, especially when they're very young, uh, they will just take on these new projects without demanding or negotiating a promotion or a salary increase. So what that means is that you will experience an increased workload first before getting any kind of benefit which actually is fine but this is the problem look at it from the perspective of the employer or for the manager if you were a manager and you, and you had an employee and there and you were able to increase their workload without giving them additional compensation then why in the world would you think that you would need to add their compensation or pay them more Anyway, they're already doing it right now. They are already voluntarily taking on a bigger workload. So there is no in real incentive at all for the employer to really rush and increase that salary of yours. Maybe they might do it eventually, but they might also be really taking their time. It is really psychological because if they're already getting you to do the work that they want you to do, why would they need to go out of their way to fight for a higher salary to you? Perhaps they might need to go to HR or they need to go to their manager and fight for that higher salary. So this is not just theory, but I've experienced it myself. I was in a position years ago where I kind of overstayed, I might say, but for different reasons. But anyways, I was working in banking for five years and um, I was also a very highly performing, driven person and that is what happened to me. So I was given more work and my workload increased by so many times. But I just continued to say yes, I didn't complain, I just continued to do all the work. But every time I asked for salary increase all the increase that I got was a very small single digit number and I was not happy with that at all so many things happened and f there were many other reasons why I eventually decided to resign like as you might know one of the reasons was because I wanted to change my career into something totally different I was interested in filmmaking acting etc and so on but anyways in the end I decided to quit my job after five years and I prepared the resignation letter I handed it to my boss and the first time I gave him my resignation letter he didn't want to know any of that he was in a rush and he just rushed off and said okay we'll talk about it later never mind after about a week I 
took that resignation letter again, that en envelope, and I tried to pass it to my boss and explain to him about the situation that I would no longer be working here. And that is when something very surprising, but actually also disappointing happened. He turned to me, he took a pause, and he actually asked me, how much do you want? I was so surprised at that moment because it was so hard to fight for even just a small salary increase over these years. But once I was ready to leave and I made my point clear that I was serious about it, then he actually acknowledged the value of me being there in the company and his team. And he actually kind of gave me a blank check and asked me, what does it take for you to stay here? But at that point, anyway, it was already too late. I've already made up my mind. So I didn't make use of that opportunity. So this is not just based on my own experience, but this is also what I've observed from many uh, other people's careers. Many people found out in the end that they have a much better chance of increasing their salary, their overall compensation by simply moving to another company. It might be a com competitor company or it might even be another um, industry if that's possible in their case. In any case, if they move to a different company, usually they will have a better chance of earning much more. So not, not just making a 5%, 10% salary increase, but even getting 20, 30% and even 100% is not unheard of, especially if all this while you've been severely underpaid. And at this point, I want to share with you a poll that I found on Twitter where people were asked this question. In your experience, is switching jobs rather than staying put a better way to make more money? And the answer is an astounding yes with 78.7%. So 78.7% agreed that in their experience, um, if they wanted to make more money, it's a better idea to switch jobs rather than just staying put. And of course, the sample size is, uh, frankly, it's not that large. There are only 183 votes, but still, I think this is quite decent and this is also quite telling. And it also agrees with my observation from my, my experience and observation of other people. So that was number one. Number one reason why you shouldn't stay too long is because there might be a risk that your earning will grow very slowly. Let's go on to number two. Number two is that if you stay in a company for too long, it might limit your learning potential. When you've been in a company for five years or 10 years, especially when you've been in the same role all this while, then at some point you might realize that you're not really learning anything new. You've been doing the same job for so many years and you're kind of stuck. You've become an expert at what you're doing. You've, you've become the person most knowledgeable in the com company about those specific tasks that you are doing. So let's just say that you are working at, at, in, at BMW and in marketing. So you are an expert um, in um, coming up with marketing plan strategy strategy for a bmw car so you are an expert at bmw however you are not necessarily an expert in the field overall you are not necessarily an expert in the automobile industry so you might be an expert at bmw at whatever it is that you are doing but you are not an expert of the field overall you are not as knowledgeable about what other things are going on at, um, let's say, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Suzuki, Toyota, and so on. I mean, of course, you you can observe their strategy from the news, from, from the outside, but you've never had the experience of working for other companies and learn from other companies how they do it. So you can't really say that you're an expert of the field overall. And like I just said, it really depends on what is important to you. Is it just important for you that you're the best in your company or do you want to go beyond that? Do you want to go a step further and um, become most knowledgeable or an expert of the automobile industry or specifically marketing in the automobile industry overall? So that's something uh, that um, is a risk if you stay at the same company for too long. 
let's go on to number three. And I think this is a um, really important thing to think about. One reason why you shouldn't stay at the same company for too long is the risk of dependency which means simply being dependent on that one company. So what is the actual risk here? There are actually three things that I want to talk about here. The first thing is that when you stay at a company for too long, you, you can be lured into this false sense of security. This means that if you've been working there for five or 10 or 15 years, I actually have a friend who's been at the same company for 20 years in practically the same role. And um, there's a risk that you might feel too secure. You feel that this job is, is, is a safe thing. It is a foolproof thing. You'll never lose it. And you'll just be able to stay there until the end of, well, not your life, but until your retirement starts. But this is why I said false sense of security, because nowadays there is no such thing as security. Depending on what happens in the company, if there's a reorganization, if um, they're making a loss instead of a profit and so on, there could be so many reasons you could actually lose your job someday. That is just a possibility. That's just a reality. And if you stay at, at the same company for too long, you might falsely think that your job is secure when it's not the case. And the second risk here related to dependency is that um, you're so dependent on that company, on the way that things work there, that you start losing your flexibility and agility. You, you yourself become so rigid, you become part of the furniture in the company. And it might be simple, small and silly things, but hu human things such as maybe you have this large table um, in your office, which you feel comfort so comfortable at, and you've arranged everything perfectly, and you have these great colleagues around you, and you just feel like everyone has become a family. And you're so used to this way of life, to your atmosphere, to your surroundings, that it becomes almost impossible for you to move and try out different things. It just becomes too scary. You're so comfortable in, in, in your cave, in, in this little comfort zone of yours. Um, and the next thing is also that you'll use adaptability because when you've been staying for the same company for that long, five years, 10 years, and so on, then what you've been practically doing is that you've tailored yourself to the company. Whatever job you're in, whether you're on the pro production side or in marketing or in accounting or so, in each company, there will be a certain way things are done. There are certain processes, certain SOPs. And when um, you're working for a specific company, you will have tailored all your knowledge and the way you do things to the way that they do things. So you really customize your skills, your skill set to what the company needs instead of developing a skill set that you actually want to develop for your career. So you are not career me, my career oriented, but instead you are uh, company process oriented, if that makes sense. So after a while, you might think that, hey, I've been spending so much time tailoring, customizing myself to this company. And if now I leave and join another company, I have to learn everything from the start again. And I don't really feel like doing that. And that is how you become dependent on the company. And of course, it's a win for the company, but you just got to start thinking about whether or not it's in your own best interest. Now, let's go on to the next big question, which is how long is actually too long? This is something that you might be asking yourself. And there are really different opinions on this. I've seen many career counselors in blogs and so talking about how many years is ideal. Some say you should stay at least two years, some stay, say five years and, and so on. But this is my opinion and take it with a grain of salt and you have to make your own opinion on this. I personally think that there is no number. You cannot say for sure how long is too long because it really depends on the particular job, the industry. It also de it depends on what is common in the industry, but it also depends on what um, what your goal is ultimately because even though people think that 
you should ideally stay in a job for two or three years. But if that is not in line with what you want to achieve, then why in the world should you stick to it, right? So this is how I would approach this question, how long is too long? Or maybe more precisely um, answer the question that you might have right now. Am I already too long in this company? Is it already time to look out or not? And the way you do it is just simply go back to these three points, three reasons that I just talked about now in great detail and just go through these and answer these for yourself. So the first one was ask yourself if I, stay at this company for a bit longer for a few more years will i be able to earn more and earn more is of course relative maybe the better um, question would be would i be able to achieve my financial goals the financial goals that i have um, does this company offer enough opportunity for a salary increase or um, for negotiating comp compensation and other benefits or is it just simply a fixed thing, 5% per year and nothing beyond that? Perhaps right now you're already earning a very great salary in your mind, which is, let's just say, $90,000 and you're perfectly happy with that. But at the same time, you also understand from your conversations with HR and your manager that um, your salary won't increase much beyond that. There is a maximum of 5% uh, increase each year and it will cap out at let's say 100,000 and you will not be able to go beyond that. So with that knowledge, you will have to decide whether or not that's in line with your own goals. And the second question you have to ask yourself regarding to learning, is there anything more that I can learn here or have I learned everything? Have I reached a kind of a plateau where I'm um, getting repetitive and I'm not learning anything new at all and it's getting kind of boring and I'm not making the most of my potential? And at the same time, are there perhaps other companies at which I might be able to learn much more and expand my capabilities? And the third question to ask yourself is, have I become dependent? Are there signs that I am highly dependent on my current company? Am I, do I have a false sense of security? Am I losing flexibility? Am I getting too comfortable with this corporate family of mine? And also, am I losing adaptability? Am I too highly tailored to this specific company to the extent that I will not be able to reshape myself to adjust to another company? So that is how you arrive at your um, answer. The last thing that I want to talk about is um, whether there are cases where staying longer makes sense. Is there a case for staying longer? And the answer is yes, there are some instances when it does make sense to stay longer. So these are some things that you might want to consider and there are two. The first one is, uh, are you currently on a fast promotion track? If you feel that you are advancing and at a very high pace and at the same time you also see there that there is much opportunity in the company for you to climb higher or for you to gain more experience if that is happening quite fast so that you're experiencing a very fast learning curve then I would say that even though you've been at the company for five years eight years you might as well just stay a bit longer there and really ride out that learning wave and make the very best of it and the second case is if you find your work truly fulfilling if your work is not just a job for you but if what you are doing on a daily basis provides you with meaning and provides you with purpose then those other things that i mentioned before might start to mean less like earnings for example might not mean as much to you and the ability to learn more and faster might also not be important to you but in this case you might find that what you are doing is making an impact it might be helping other people's lives and so on and you find it very fulfilling and meaningful and in that case by all means stay on so you really got to ask yourself what is your intention what is your vision for your career. You have to first determine what you want for yourself. And only if you know that will you be, an will you be able to answer this question, whether or not you are staying at the same company for too long or not, and whether or not it's time to look outside. 
So just to recap everything, if you are questioning uh, whether um, it's time to move on, review these questions. Is there any potential for growing your income? Is there anything more that you can learn here? And are you getting too dependent on your company or not? And also answer the two additional questions if these exceptions apply to you, um, which is number one, are you on some kind of fast promotion track? Is there a very fast learning curve? And number two, is the work that you're doing truly fulfilling and meaningful? And after you've answered all these questions, you get to the answer, no or yes. And if it's yes, then well, then it's time to plan your exit. Start looking outside. So that was episode number six on why you shouldn't stay at the same company for too long. I hope that the content today was useful for you. If you're listening to this on YouTube, then please uh, feel free to drop your comments below and also your questions. And if you have suggestions on what kind of topics you want to hear about in the future, or if you have any questions related to your career, your multiple careers, your career aspirations, also feel free to drop them down below. I might make that into another podcast episode. And if you want to get in touch with me, um, you can also follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is multiple careers. Um, at the moment, I'm not really actively answering DMs, but you can surely um, drop me a comment, a re reply to one of my posts there. And yeah, that's how we can get in touch. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And remember, no matter where you are at right now in your career journey, on your career path, and no matter what age you are, whether, whether you're 20, 30, 40, or even 60 and 70, you can always make a change to your career. It is never too late. Even though you just make a very tiny change to your career, you will be able to change your career into something better, even just by 1% or by 5%. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.